Hello and welcome to Sci Guys, the show where we talk about the crazy, weird, and wonderful stories from the science world. I'm Corey, and as always, I'm joined by my two co-hosts, Jamp and Luke Cutfer. Hey, that was not. <laughs> I've got, to, I've got to come up with different things every week. You know you can just say, James, you know you can just say hello. Hello. No, yes. I, I did that Do the you first come week. up with different greetings for every time you so, see a person? No, the first week no. was hello, the second Hi. week was hey. bonjour, and now it's... Uh, what is uh, week like four going to be? You're moving through the European languages. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. What's week four going to be? Well, that's that's I'm surprising. Surprising. Isn't it? I don't want to. I'm out. <laughs> this is my last episode, guys. <laughs> this week we'll be covering undead dogs and living pork. Sorry, what? Yeah. Undead dogs. And living pork. I'm going to take a guess. Is this about head transplants? It does come into it, yeah. Hey, a little isn't, bit of head transplants. living pork just pig? pig? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a little bit of a pork is just pig. <laughs> That's the way I prefer my pork. <laughs> on a pig. Oh my god, I've got uh. some pre-deceased beef here. <laughs> As a species, we've been fascinated with death. More specifically, we've been collectively obsessed with finding ways to reverse death. In science fiction, we have zombies, and in the past few weeks, scientists have begun to make this science fact. What? Science fact. Science fact. What, science like, fact, not science the, fiction. In the past few weeks? Yeah, the past few weeks. Oh. What's happened? What's happened? Oh, I'll tell you what's happened. Please do. But not now. Oh. oh. Okay. <laughs> First, I'm going to do a little bit of a background on... Life. This is the bit in the movie where it goes, 18 years earlier. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hate movies like that. <laughs> Just start your story where it begins. Yes. What is life? Okay, what is life? Life is uh, replicators, right? <laughs> like taking in energy Repli- and replicating yourself, that's replicators. life. Replicators. Life yeah. is a film f- starring Jake Gyllenhaal and Ryan Reynolds. Really? That's what life is, that's what life what yeah, is called so in the selfish gene, is replicators. There are seven key things you need to define something as being alive. Do you know what any oh, of them are? I learned these in school, but I forgot. Yeah. I remember there's um, movement. Mm-hmm. Isn't there like a bunch of M's? Yeah, there's there's a bunch of M's and then there's a couple. Can you more. tell us the the thing that you use to remember it? And we'll Mrs. Mrs. Gr- Mrs. 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 Greb, Mrs. Greb, something like that. Mrs. Oh, that rings a bell. Mrs. Gren, I Gren. think. Gren? So M movement, mm-hmm. movement. What comes next in Mrs. R, R. is <laughs> reproduction or reproduction or res- respiration. Respiration. I've got okay S. Uh, Sensing Sex Sensitivity Sensitivity Uh, Sex Sex Sex. (laughs) No Um, Because then plants don't have sex G What could G G Grow Grow. Yeah grow Grow And then another R You had Um, it Reproduction Reproduction Mm -hmm. Okay E Eating (laughs) Opposite of eating Oh excretion Excretion Ah. And B N N N. Sorry (laughs) This is Greb Um, (laughs) N What would N be? New Newton's rules of physics. Yes. Movement. That's right. Newton's yeah. laws no, of thermodynamics. Nutri- <laughs> Did Newton do that? No, no. he didn't. Nu- no. Nu- it's nu- nutrition. It's new, oh. Nutrition. Yeah, nutrition. That's Newton's nutrition. Yeah, so this is really simplified. I mean, I had to look this up because I haven't done I did learn school. that in school, but that, I completely forgot that until we this, until this of, very second. most of them, yeah. Of yeah, I know. It's only when you said Mrs. Gren that I was like, <gasps> I had no like idea that was. I had no idea that was a thing either. I didn't use that like, really? mnemonic. No. Ah. I just... Well, you're welcome. I've, I've just taught you something before you taught mm, me something. I already remember Exciting. it. That's the thing. New host of the podcast. Essentially, all that means is that you need to have some combination of those things to be defined as alive, which, you know, viruses. Do you not have to have all of them? Um, so people, some people say all of them. Some oh. people say... This You've got isn't... high expectations, haven't you? Well, but... Sorry. <laughs> if it's a rule, it should be a rule. I've got most of them. It's fine. That's the thing. Like, you've, you've got conflicting views on this. Because viruses, for instance, they don't do most of these things. But viruses aren't classed as life, are they? Viruses have gone back and forth on being life and being not life. I think right now they're not life. But oh. I, essentially what they I do... I thought they were life. So No, because they put their little replicators that put themselves inside life and make life replicate them. Mm-hmm. They're not life on their own. Right. They actually can't do anything on their own. Whereas most living things can do things on their own. Which is a key right. part of being alive, essentially. Yeah. Uh, viruses are like um, tiny, tiny py- parasites. <laughs> pirates. <are> they- <laughs> pirates. Tiny, 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 tiny pirates. pirates. It's like if you were like a computer virus. Yeah. You're useless if you don't have a computer to be I in. guess you're mm. not a computer. If you're just- a virus is- yeah, you're <laughs> yeah. not a computer. You're just a bunch well, of computer code. Well, computer virus is just essen- essentially a virus. Like they are. The, the yes. name is apt. Yes. A, a virus is mm. just genetic code 
in a little capsule that injects itself and then replicates. Okay. Yeah, weird. Because like a computer virus doesn't actually mean anything without a host, like Windows. If you mm-hmm. put a computer virus for Windows in Mac, it doesn't do mm-hmm. anything. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so we know what life is now. We know what life is. <laughs> Generally, yeah, we got a good grasp on life. Grasp I think it's life. the only thing I took away from my like six months of biology or whatever it You is. took away life? Who did you kill? No, 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 not life. Mrs. Gren. You Mrs. killed Mrs. Class? Gren? I'm just We're going Mrs. to Gren. murder someone. <laughs> Uh, they actually do that in medicine. Well, they don't murder someone. They take someone that's dead. You know, yeah, their that's cadaver. not the same thing, Corey. They pull their eyes out their skull. That's oh, still not the same blimey. thing, because they're already dead. And I did that to, like, a rat. I did a dissection of a rat in biology. I thought you meant just off your own accord. <laughs> did you know? <laughs> well, I pulled the eyes out of a rat, so that's totally fine. <laughs> no, like, I did... I. Dissected a rat, but I didn't kill a rat. You guys had live dissect. How old are you? Not live dissection. Not live dissect. That's a vivisection. Live you had, dissection. You had, you yeah, had like dissections in. Dissection. You had oh. dissections in uh, school. We were like year eight. Oh wow, we weren't yeah. allowed to have those. It was really smelly. What? I imagine it would be. We cut into a cow's heart, which seems a bit satanic upon reflection. <laughs> The best I had was... Cut, yeah, it was just like, we just brought in a tray of hearts and we had to... Yeah. Oh. I mean, James, we're vegan. Into cooking into, cu- cutting into anything <laughs> alive bit, seems satanic to us, doesn't it? I mean, a cow's heart isn't really alive if it's not a part of the cow. A heart, specifically. Or is you've it? Already, you've already killed it and taken it out of the cow. And then you just going to cut into it. Well, we'll find so, out later. That might not be the case. doesn't it? That might not be the case. So, uh, what is death? Uh, stopping all those things. <laughs> no more Mrs. Greb. <laughs> no Greb. more Mrs. Greb. No more Mrs. Greb. Goodbye, Mrs. Greb. Um, Gren. So, N-, N. Gren. Butrition. Gren. Nutrition. Butrition. 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 <laughs> this is nonsense. What is death? I would... Well, the death has many definitions, doesn't it? Many definitions, yes. And as time goes on, we push that boundary further because it used to be like, when your heart stopped beating, you were dead. So that's what, clin- that's what clinical death is. Yes. So mm. before we could really start your heart again or, like, you know, have your blood flow again, essentially death was just... That's death. When your heart okay. stopped. Uh, so that's what clinical death is. But is, then, that why, is that why people say, oh, you were dead on the table for 10 minutes or whatever? Now, now yeah. yes. My friend mm. Darian died on his birthday. Oh. He has a heart condition and he had a drink with loads of caffeine in it on oh. his birthday. And he was pronounced, pronounced medically dead in hospital that's and awful. then just came back to life. Yeah? The same oh. thing happened to my uncle. He fell off a bus and died and then undied. And then didn't. How does that work? He fell off a bus. I don't know. This is a. This could be a rubbish story that he told me, but (laughs) I'm certain that he fell off a bus and died. Okay. Yeah, but essentially, you can you can come back to life so long as you you're able to stop brain death. As long as you're not too dead. Exactly. As long as you're not too dead. So brain death is too dead. If you're particularly dead, then you don't have a very high chance of coming back. That's essentially. If you're quite dead. So uh, if you're not very dead, then. Uh, when you're clinically dead, consciousness, you'll lose it in a couple seconds. Not very long. Your heart stops. I don't. I I fly off into the ether. What's the ether? Well, the ether is like the netherworld. It's that bit from Thor 2. It's that bit the from, red stuff. I was thinking Minecraft. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> when you die, James, you're going to end up in Minecraft. Going, you're going to be in Minecraft. <laughs> <laughs> this is the afterlife. <laughs> <laughs> So brain activity stops within 20 to 40 seconds um, and you might start gasping at this point, but... If I was dead, I'd gasp. (laughs) (laughs) Oh no, I've died. (laughs) We're ruining, we're ruining Corey's story. I'm sorry. Let's give Corey, hang on. I told you, I told you this was a long one. Let's get a, let's get a timer and give Corey a solid 30 seconds (laughs) to actually say something. I've got a timer, ready? Three, two, one, Go. Okay, so you might be gasping during this early time period of death, but that still means you're dying. That's not you breathing again. Your, your body's just kind of freaking out because it doesn't have any brain activity. So all your tissues and organs steadily start to die just from the lack of oxygenated blood getting to them because your heart can't pump it there. And brain death is what follows, and that's the complete loss of brain function, including any involuntary activity sustain- to sustain life. So no that's heartbeat. Good, yeah. yeah. That's 30 seconds, by the way. <laughs> Brilliant. 30 seconds of solid teaching. No heartbreak. No heartbreak. No heartbreak. No, no heartbreak. No heartbreak. No heartbreak. <laughs> no heartbreak. No heartbreak. No heartbreak. No heartbeat. No blinking. No breathing. No interrupting me. None of that. Death is no blinking. Well, I mean, yes, technically. Yeah. Permanently. I'm not blinking right now, am I? You're dead. Da, da, da. So, reversing death. Obviously, death kind of sucks, you know? 
Yes, that's the medical term. Yeah, it kind of sucks. Yeah, it makes people check sad. my files. Actually, mm, mm, kind of sucks. That sucks. <laughs> in researching this, I it, I was reading I was reading an article that was just describing what death was in the most kind of clinical way, and it was like people feel sad because of death because they feel like it's the end of life and they miss those that have died. Like, no shit. Obviously. Thank you, medical Thank journal. You. Thanks, thanks, doctor. Great, thanks. good to know. What is the medical definition of death now? Well, there are different. That's the thing. There are different medical definitions of death. So well, that's just stupid. No one well, can agree. Mm, there's clinical death, which is heart stop. Then there's brain death, which is all brain activity just stopped. So those are your two main right. deads. <laughs> two main deads. Two main okay. deads. Okay. Yeah. So we're going to be talking mostly about brain dead. But doesn't that make James clinically dead? Not like medic. Like oh, he's, shut up! It's he's, just my heart. No, 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 no. He's, he's not dead. clinically <laughs> dead. He's brain dead. Yeah. Clinically, he's my brain's still kicking. It's just my heart. That okay. Doesn't work. So that would be. But he um, has no brain activity. That would be in a being in a vegetative state. <laughs> That's what James is. <laughs> oh, vegans are all vegetables. <laughs> Wait, so you can be in a vegetative state and still be alive? Yeah. So, so death would be then a combination of brain death and cl- and clinical death. And Essentially, death. yeah. Well, the thing is, um, being in a vegetative state basically just means you can sustain your body, like you can have the functions like breathing and your heartbeat. And that's about it. There's mm. no higher brain function. <laughs> Whereas the, the much more terrifying thing is locked in syndrome. Have you yes. heard of that? Yes. So Lock it in. That's the opposite. Oh, so that yeah. So that's where your your body is completely paralyzed, mostly apart from your eyes. Oh, so some people can communicate but, through their but eyes. Your brain's still like going mad. Oh Absolutely. yeah, you're fine. Fully fine. Rave. You can yeah. You can still have inputs oh, and stuff. Blimey. With locked in syndrome, there are cases of being completely unable. Mostly just your eyes still. Yeah. Work. So it essentially, in most cases, you're able to move your eyes, yeah. but otherwise. Mm-hmm. You can't. So you might not be able to. I don't want that. No, no, no. no. That's not good, right? No. I'd rather be in a coma. Well, because then you can't. You also can't actually convey to your loved ones that you're still in there, mm. and that's sadder. That's I worse. Think. That's really oh, yeah, sad. Yeah, that's that's awful. Because they could. Spe- you might actually be brain dead as well. No, uh, on an EEG. You well, but you still might be same. unconscious but still registering on an EEG, for example, because we don't actually understand what consciousness is. Mm. So you could be present. And registering as present, or you could be not present, present but still registering on an EEG. And if you can't communicate that, that's so sad because they might spend their whole life thinking you're there and caring for you and what, like putting TV shows on for you and stuff. And that would be so sad if you. They're can't. just doing it to a corpse. Oh dear, a warm yeah, corpse. Yeah, what if they're just doing it? It's like a plant. It's like putting a TV show on for your plant. Oh, I like doing that though. Uh, most tissues and organs of the body can survive clinical death for quite quite a while so blood circulation can be stopped in the entire body below the heart for at least 30 minutes um and injury to the spinal cord is the main thing that's going to stop you from coming back uh detached limbs uh so yeah you get you you've seen the thing on tv obviously like someone cuts off a finger or a hand or something you can reattach that up for up to i think six hours wow yeah yeah. if you freeze it no um that's no blood circulation at warm temperatures Wow. Yeah. Obviously, if you cut off your limb, put it in ice, please. Mm, yes. <laughs> Straight sure. away. It helps. Yeah. It does help. Absolutely. Your bones, tendon, and skin can survive for about 8 to 12 hours, which is mental. Imagine just peeling off someone's skin. Just oh, outside of the, the body. Fridge. Yeah. So without... Uh, no. No, I said the body. But without um, circulation. Oh, okay. Yeah. So they just stay alive, <laughs> as in the cells stay alive. The cells can stay alive for longer, oh, okay. yeah. Okay. I mean, it's it's essentially just going through hypoxia. So your brain is the thing that needs the oxygen the most. Hypoxia mm. is no oxygen, James. I got that from the ox. You look confused. <laughs> from the went, ox. An the ox, ox the magic ox. And told him, <laughs> that means no oxygen, James. By the way. Thanks, Mr. Ox. Thanks. <laughs> Sounds Let's like do. a Harry Potter spell. Hypoxia. Hypoxia. <laughs> That's what he used in the, the Triwizard Tournament when he had to go in the water. <laughs> the bubble head charm. Yeah. <laughs> Hypoxia. <laughs> so the brain is the limiting factor here, clearly for both of you as well. <laughs> yes. Particularly. Uh, it seems to it gets injured by it not having any oxygen in it much faster than any other organ, and without any special treatment after circulation's restarted, you're probably going to have brain damage or mm. just complete brain death, mm. um, just because it, it needs oxygen. So that's why we'd say it's the limiting factor for recovery from clinical death. One of the pioneers for this kind of study of studying how to reverse brain death or keep the brain alive separate from the body was Sergei Brokonenko. Brokonenko. It's, he's Russian. I got that. It's These names are hard, okay? <laughs> he was born in 1890 and died in 1960, and he's known for the development of the autojector, which is an early heart and lung machine. Or so is that basically to keep 
oxygen going to the brain. Yeah. So he didn't develop, or maybe he did later, but he didn't develop a way of recovering the brain. He kept a way of keep giving the. He just developed just, a way of keep giving the brain oxygen. So that's essentially that's how you want to recover the. If you if you cut off someone's head, yeah. The, you what want you want to, to recover do, the brain by never letting it die. Essentially. It's right. going to go through. It's going to go through. That's brain not recovering. It's going to go through That's brain just death. not letting it die. Yeah. It's going to go through, through. It's going to start going through that process yeah. very quickly. Uh huh. So to get to full recovery. Right. But if that to, happens, if you have, if the brain degrades, do we have ways of making it better again, or do we just have to not let it get worse? So not not then. Um. That's that's not that was not even nearly possible then. But okay. Over recent years, it's become more of a more of an avenue that we can look down. Okay. So. Mm-hmm. He did his early experiments on dogs. Uh, there's actually this short film that you could watch about 10 minutes long. I watched it on YouTube um, called The Experiments of Revival of Organisms. It was made in 1939. Did he cut dogs' heads 39. off? Okay, so in the film, he, it's it's not really... An ex- it's, it doesn't show his experiments. It's more of a representation of them. It's faked. But he absolutely did cut off do- dogs' heads, yeah. And then kept them alive. Um, <sighs> supposedly, I mean, it's very well documented. He won an he won an award uh, because of his experiments because they were so heavily documented. Yeah. Um, supposedly, he was able to keep a dog's head alive, uh, apart from its body, and he was able to respond to some uh, oh, some blimey. stimulus. That's amazing. And we have have we done that with any people ever? Um, we've not. We've people have tried to do it with people. So obviously, the French they love their revolutions. They love cutting mm-hmm. off people's heads. Yes. There were many many studies just trying to get them get them to work. But the issue being. <laughs> Many beheadings. <laughs> <laughs> there were so many behead- beheadings, yes. honestly. Heads were were not a thing that were hard to come by at that point in France. <laughs> honestly, thing is, I've like, heard... It was very easy. <laughs> I've obviously heard about... <laughs> I've heard about all the head choppings off. And I've also heard about, like, where someone would say, oh, I'll keep blinking as soon as I have mm. my head cut off so you can see how long I stay in my head. Mm. And it was, like, 10 seconds or something. Um, or I think the guy who said that actually just didn't blink. Mm. So either he left or he couldn't blink or whatever. But I've never heard that they were trying to keep them alive. I've so never heard that. Not not necessarily just trying to keep them alive. Just studying what what happened to the brain to the brain and to the head once you cut it off. So doctors were like scrambling to get these in, but it would take like up to four hours to get them to lab sometimes. So why don't they just chop the head off in a lab? Because it was they weren't allowed to do that. <laughs> They're not doing it for science. Guys, they're what just, if we just bring the guillotine? You said they're not allowed to do that <laughs> because they're they're taking they're taking the heads that have been chopped off from like criminals and they were still uh, chopping heads off. No, this was this was this was years and years before before the dogs. Okay, so when you say labs, you're using that as a bit of a push, more like a lair, <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> a sciencey lair or a dungeon, a laboratory. That still works. They still had laboratories a okay. couple centuries ago. Imagine where Professor Snape dwells. It's not. That kind of... <laughs> do you think? Do you picture a vibe. lab just as this high tech? Yes. Yes, a I lab. Do. You could still have labs, like or a, like a really a cute dog ago. that's like yes. yes. <laughs> it took us four hours to get the head to the oh golden Labrador. God. <laughs> Moving on, um, Sergey did a lot of experiments on dogs, draining their blood, uh, reintroducing the blood to their system, cutting their heads off, and seeing if they'd stay alive. And like I've said in that film, it was mostly faked, but what he's recorded does seem possible. So he claimed to have a whole litter of dogs. In fact, he cut one of their heads off, bred, bred it with another one, he cut their heads off, and then cut the head off of the offspring and brought it back to life. Wait, shit. Hold hang on. on. No, they no, wait, hold on, wait. No, no, no. You can't fuck, cut the fuck, head's on, dog off on. and then make it breed. <laughs> I did not think of what I was saying. <laughs> That's so, a bit backwards. <laughs> <laughs> now, have sex. Right, now you've got your head I off. I don't have a penis, master. <laughs> Why is the dog speaking English? They're in Russia. Why is the dog breeding without a head? Okay, so I misspoke. Sergey drained the blood of two dogs. Then he bred those dogs after he brought them back to life and did the same to the offspring. So the offspring was the offspring oh, of an undead dog. Yeah. He, he, he did it he across did it generations. Parents, they survived and then they bred and they did it to the babies. That's an easy way to, to explain it. I don't understand why. No, I don't get that either. Because but like, that's what happened. If he can bring it back to life with the blood, then is he testing that dogs that have had their blood drained and reintroduced can still breed? They're not, like, infertile? That's I a mean, weird it's, experiment. It's not that weird an experiment. It's assuming that it's testing the limits of, right. of the, of the, of was the that life. Was the actual test he did? Sorry? Was that the actual test he did, or was he just... 
Do you just need more dogs? To be honest, this stuff is so old and in Russian, so... Yeah. <laughs> I'm mostly getting this from second-hand accounts that are very well referenced. As, <laughs> yeah, essentially... You should have learned Russian for the purpose of this episode, Corey. I don't... I'm I, disappointed in you. Not I only have a week to the between episodes, Luke. I tried to learn Polish You've last time. You've been this for a year. You could have learned Russian over the last year. <laughs> Can we all learn Russian and just do Useless. one episode in Russian? <laughs> no, James. Me and you don't have to learn Russian. We oh, just have to he make can it silly. speak actual Russian and we'll just speak gibberish Russian. I mean, it's essentially what we're doing. He does... He does does joke he does the story in english and we'll make our jokes in russian so he doesn't know what we're talking about <laughs> fast forward to about 80 years later which is now um we are doing a lot more studies like this specifically recently at, oh wait that's concerning well uh, at <laughs> yale uh they did some studies on pigs have you guys heard of this of pigs yes i've heard of pigs and i have heard of yale pigs yes here's a here's a tip with pigs don't pull their tails because if because if you do they'll bite you i know that from experience oh, don't okay Thank you. You're welcome. I wasn't planning on pulling a pig's tail, but... Go straight. I'll like curly, straight. You know what? I didn't consider it. But now that you've mentioned it, I kind of want to pull a pig's tail. Yeah, don't do it. Okay. That sounds like a euphemism. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> so, 32 pig brains were collected after being slaughtered. So, they picked them up from an abattoir. Is it an abattoir? Abattoir, yeah. Yeah, I learned that word today. Abattoir. You learned that word today. I'm sure I knew it already. What? <laughs> I-, I looked at it and I was like, that looks like a familiar word. I never need to James use Cameron it. film. No, it's not. <laughs> Avatar. <laughs> Imagine if Avatar was just about abattoirs. It's just, it was a, set in an it's abattoir. just a printing. Probably abattoir. be much more interesting. Abattoir. So they published this study in Nature. So just they went out to the to like the, the forest. <laughs> <laughs> I published this study in Nature. Oh. <laughs> nature is a journal. I know that. You didn't know what an abattoir was. Carry on. Uh, four hours after death, the pig's brains were connected to a system which pumped synthetic blood around the brain. Uh, this system is called BrainX, which... Uh, did Elon Musk make it? <laughs> no, it was made from no. um, parts from 15 different companies. So it's kind of a hodgepodge of just parts. I mean, that's the same as like the iPhone's made of parts from lots of different companies yeah, as but well. They, <laughs> the point is that they built... The, iPhone is, a, is mass-produced. They built this in a lab specifically for this purpose. Ah. Yeah. Yeah, so they kind of threw all this stuff together. Uh, so the liquid blood stuff that they As opposed to the solid <laughs> the blood solid that blood. we all have. <laughs> this fake blood is called hemopure, which is made from cow's blood. Mm. Yeah. Um, so it also had drugs designed to slow or reverse brain death. And an anesthetic was being held at the ready because they were scared that the pigs would come back to life. And they'd have to anesthetize them. But I thought it was them. just the pigs' brains. So it's pigs', pigs heads. I, it, right. I assume it's pig's heads. They haven't actually said whether it's just the heads or the brains, but it's ex vivo, so I assume it's in head. So they were scared that the pig would like wake up and be like, Bleh! Well, essentially, it's just yeah. a I head. Mean, if, if, if it worked, ethically, they would have to have that ready. <laughs> wow, that's horrible. I mean, imagine imagine that dying and then waking up just... Without your without body. Your, without your body. <laughs> I, oh, I'm horrible. in a predicament. This is horrible. It's awful, right? It really is. And you wouldn't be able to experience anything. This is two weeks be... in a row that we've had dead animals as a theme. I mean, it's science. What do you expect? No, I guess. Oh, God. Why, yeah. are, we, why are we part of the Psy guys? <laughs> so these animals were dead, dead already. Animals? To be fair, we didn't kill these animals for science. We uh, took dead animals. Okay, fine. Yeah. Fine, I think. Yes. Less bad. Less yes. bad. So they did this for six hours. And ten hours after the pigs were decapitated, uh, they discovered minor brain activity. So, which was a kind of slight delay or reduction in the brain death of the pigs. Mm. So they also managed to restore some blood cell activity. And um, that, yeah, that's the what end of the sentence. What does that mean? What does that mean? That means essentially that the blood was pumping around the brain oh, and it was working well. So they used an EEG, which we've spoken about already. Um, and there was no general brain activity. So there wasn't like activity all over the brain. Mm. It was just in localized synapses. Right. Yeah. So not useful in any way. No, it's actually quite... I mean, not useful if you want to be... If you want to have a living pig, but... <laughs> well, that was the hope, yes. Is that not the point? <laughs> no, no, they, they didn't want to make the pigs alive again. What were they, what were they hoping the outcome was then? So, essentially, what they've, what they've tried to do Just is... Less dead. Yeah. Less dead Less pigs. dead pig. Less so, dead pigs. For what reason? Well, if you can kind of reverse brain death, that's something. If you can find out whether brains are able to regenerate after being separated from a body. Also, being able to keep a brain alive completely apart from a body is great for studying brains and brain diseases. So essentially what you could do is you could just take a broken brain out of a head or chop the head off 
and keep it apart and pump it full of drugs, see what works. But then you, but then, but hang on. If we as science are believing, we are science. Yes, sorry, yes, me and you and James are science. I'm as, not as science in the scientific um, theory. The, the, self, the self is wholly contained within the brain. Mm. So if a brain dies and then you bring it back to life, pumping it full of blood and keep it alive, then you've got, a, by science's own theory, a person with no sensory input that you're then just testing drugs on. Yeah, which is why you keep, keep it in the head. We're far off. We're, we're not able to do the whole brain in a jar thing yet. But that's um, horrible. We still, need the, we still need the whole apparatus of the head to, to keep the brain alive. Right. So, so these... That's... That's not why... Well, you said, that's why we keep it in the head. That's not why we keep it in the head. We keep it in the head because we're not good enough yet. We don't keep it in the head because it's unethical and you're keeping a person without sensory <laughs> input. Because that's what I think. You're keeping it in the head because we don't know how to recreate a head yet. Which well, is not the same at all. I, mean, I hate... I think what I'm realising in this podcast is I hate science so much. Well, not all science. Some science is good. I like my iPhone and I like... I don't know. Well, your iPhone like, is... Microwave rice. Your iPhone... <laughs> I'm going to say the weather. <laughs> your iPhone is full of the blood of dead pigs. It's not full of it. I'm sure yeah, it contains... Not... Your hands are red with blood. <laughs> I'm sure it has a bit of... For some reason, the blood of dead pigs, you're telling... I believe you that it does. Metaphorically. It's, it's different to it metaphorically being full speaking. of the blood of dead pigs. Metaphorically speaking. If you pop open the little pin thing, it's just blood. <laughs> blood it's pouring out. <laughs> it's full of it. Like when you it's kill like the, the Horcrux in Harry Potter and it's just... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, so <laughs> that little that little metal thing with the pin on is actually the sword of Godric Gryffindor, and my eyes are all cracks and it comes as a package. <laughs> so we don't have full brain activity from the pigs, uh, but we do have the arrangement of the cells in the brain staying preserved. We've got brain death being reduced, and what essentially we've learned from this is that mammalian brains, under the right conditions, can kind of regenerate from brain death, which is pretty incredible. We've got so many degenerative brain diseases, and this could be a step towards finding a cure for them. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, we're not just cutting off. I feel like if you... it's, it's going to be used to help diseases, I, I can I can find some peace with that. I feel like I say things like this. For and... So so far, I've just been... Sorry, Sorry. Uh, well, say your thing first. I, was, I feel like I say things like this, and you look at me in horror as though there's no reason for it. My counter argument to that would be just because an outcome is good doesn't mean that the method you use to get there is good. <laughs> and I think this is horrible. They're, they're dead already. No, no, because apparently they're not. What if you were successful and you brought the pig back to life and then the pig is just a disembodied living pig soul? Well, that's why they, that's why they pumped it full of drugs. Sorry, to make mate, sure it that accident. it wasn't fully conscious. I mean, you said that was because so the pig didn't snap and go crazy. That's not the, again, not the same thing. <laughs> not the same thing at all. Pretty much. I don't believe that when we eventually are able to decapitate a head, take the brain out, pump it with blood to make it still be alive, I don't believe that we are going to be, or science will be focused wholly on the well-being of the soul trapped inside there and giving it drugs to stay happy. It will just be going, or the, the main purpose will be on how can we get something out of this? And then any kind of thought towards the well-being of that thing, that being, will be secondary. I don't disagree. Yes. No, I I, I mean, <laughs> I don't disagree at all. That's what we've got sci-fi for. All yeah. of these stories have already, have already been told. I was reading a really interesting article on this about how we need to start thinking about the ethics of a brain in a jar. Or like a Futurama, like head in a jar already. Mm. Because... Mm. We're getting too close to, yes. to not think about it. Well, yeah. Flying a bit too close to the sun. Yeah. yeah, I mean, if you just have... If your brain is just a series of inputs from different, like, machines, like eyes and ears mm. and stuff, it won't be very long before we can simulate those. Absolutely not. And it won't be very long before we go, oh, well, actually, the body's pretty uh, annoying. So if we can just simulate all of the inputs, then you can just live in a fake world. And then you're a brain in a jar living in a fake world. And maybe that's what you we already are. Already a bit, yeah. yeah, you we probably have no already idea. are that. <sighs> bit rubbish. Yeah, this is the best it's I can a bit do. Rubbish, isn't it? Yeah. God, this is depressing. It's Why is it always depressing? Is. Yeah, I don't know. So, it's science. Because it's science, and science doesn't care about you. It just cares about science. What this does mean is that Kings win the Golden Circle is kind of right. Have you seen that? I, I have seen that. I can't remember. What do what they... It. So, spoiler, there's a scene where... Um, I was going to say Chandler Bing, but that's not... Channing that's Tatum. Channing Tatum. 
imagine Chandler Bing. Chandler Bing. Or Channing Tatum was just in Friends. Yeah, there's a scene where Chandler... Channing Tatum. There's a scene where Channing Tatum gets shot in the head. Yeah. And they just pull out the suitcase and wrap his head in it. And he's fine. Oh, yeah, they did do that. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that now. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, So this is essentially a step towards that. Just stopping brain death entirely and putting someone on ice until they're fine. Because they also did that with the other character. With Harry. Yes, Harry. That's his name. So that was the study. Essentially, they cut off pig heads and tried to bring them back to life. And they got a little bit of little bit of electrical activity in there, which is good. Is it? Well, ethically, no. Scientifically, yes. You win some, you lose some. That's just, that's the story <laughs> of Jurassic also, Park, isn't it? it wasn't like it was successful. It was like, if full, if, if, if the goal is to bring it completely back to life, then they're not even a tiny bit there. They got like tiny localized bits of activity. Well, the right? goal isn't essent- isn't necessarily to bring it entirely back. It was more to test whether they could bring it back at all or not. Right. Whether they could regenerate it or whether a, a head that's been cut off for four hours can achieve some level of activity. And we've already known that, yeah, you can have cells that have metabolic activity after after death, but brain cells are fickle. Yeah. They're very difficult to work with. So knowing that they, we can do this with brain cells is a massive step. Yeah. Okay, ignore me. Well, it's quite I will. Interesting. Do you understand this, James? I understand. No, I don't. I do it's understand. Quite, <laughs> I don't, <laughs> no, I do understand. I do understand. understand it. It. No, I just funny. don't. I, I don't, you don't agree with it. I yeah. don't agree that it's good or even necessary but I don't. I don't like the method. I just think these dead the people slightest. need to take one for the team. <laughs> and, be, and be dead. And be dead. Well, but that's the point. Well, and be undead and then be dead again. They're being brought back to to life, and they've yeah, just and then, died. Like but imagine, they're just going to die again. Imagine so. like finally accepting death. They should be grateful. No. We brought them back to life. No. <laughs> so how is this going to affect us <laughs> in the future? Uh, essentially, be head in jars, brain in jars. Hopefully, head in jars. Something in a jar. I'd rather be a head in a jar. Really? I think you'd be better to, to be a brain in a jar That's hooked up thinking. to a simulation where you at least have limbs and no. can walk around. Yeah, but if you found stuff. out that you were... Why not both? Why not be a brain in a jar? It's just a brain in a... Just a head in a jar with a, a brain VR. in a jar, right? <laughs> a brain in a jar with like a robot body. Yes. But at least if you're a brain in a jar, you can experience a world that's more interesting than this one. Whereas, well, that's really sad. Well, this, I mean, sure, the world's interesting. I'm not saying it's not, but you could make it more interesting. That's true. You could do the same with Science psychedelics. Science has achieved. <laughs> you could what? You could do the same with psychedelics. This isn't for going in. But I you, you said you could do the same with Cameron Dallas. <laughs> <laughs> Cameron <laughs> Dallas! <laughs> Cut his head off and put him in a jar. So this is a proof of concept for keeping brains alive separate from the body. And it's also a step towards curing degenerative brain diseases. Like Degenerate. Ellen it's degenerative. It's a really... Uh, degenerative is such a difficult word to say. Isn't it? I was practicing it today, but it's just... It's just, not start by, just start by saying degenerous. Degenerous. Oh, Ellen Degenerous. Degenerative. So degenerative. It's a uh, it's a step towards curing Ellen Degenerous brain diseases. <laughs> oh, finally, <laughs> the worst kind. <laughs> <laughs> so, looking at the possibility of a brain transplant, we currently have no means of connecting a brain to the spinal cord or the brain stem to the head and neck nerves. So, if a you brain were... transplant or a head transplant? Brain. Okay. What about head transplant? So, so it's sort of when you at? say brain transplant, you actually mean almost the opposite of what we would call a transplant because in a transplant i'm receiving a heart so but, I guess but you're transplant transplanting then. me into a new body so i guess it's a body transplant body yeah. transplant, yeah. transplant yeah upgrade to a better model so that would be the equivalent of having a stroke at the brain stem because you stop receiving oxygen yeah which is not good it will essentially leave you permanently or temporarily paralyzed from well the eyes good. down fantastic yeah that's not good you might be able to move your eyes but then again you might not so <laughs> Maybe not, maybe not with the brain transplants mm. just yet. Yeah. Would um, you have forehead movement? Would you? Do you want to raise your eyebrows? You can maybe. speak in Morse code. Do you know Morse code, James? No, but I'd learn it. How? How would you tell someone to teach you Morse code while you're unable to? Move? I'd use Morse code. <laughs> 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 you, what you can do is you can learn. I would just do different combinations <laughs> no, until I got it right. Before, right now, after this episode, you can learn. Teach me Morse code in Morse code. So then if you ah. ever find yourself in this situation, you can say, teach me Morse code. Just te- just learn Morse code at that point. Actually, to be fair, no, by learning, learn by learning the letters for teach me Morse code, you'd already probably learned half the alphabet. Most of, yeah. Just, ma- just, just learn Morse. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So on that note, that is the episode. What have you guys learned today? Not Morse code. <laughs> not Morse code. Yeah. <laughs> not yet. Not yet. It's not the end of the day, James. You I might can check, if, learn I'll check if it's on Duolingo or not. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.
Thanks for listening. You can find the full references for this episode in the description. Subscribe for new episodes every Monday. And why not leave a nice wee review? Find and contact us at SciGuysPod on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. You can follow me at NotCory. I'm Luke Cutforth on Instagram, Twitter, and all the other things. You can find me at Jamkin on Duolingo Learning Morse Code. <laughs> <laughs> okay, bye. Bye. Cool, bye. <laughs>